this is Selma Schimmel and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Tracy Balboni, Assistant Professor in Radiation Oncology and a Specialist in Palliative Care at Harvard Medical School and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Your work here at this ASCO meeting I find fascinating, and that's what we're going to talk about first. And your topic is relating to patients on a humanistic or spiritual level, mm -hmm. how physicians can make a difference. So let's talk about that and how you even came to do this presentation here at ASCO. Well, my primary um, research area is within um, the role of spirituality and the experience of cancer. And um, you know, many patients, their spirituality, whether in more traditional forms or non-traditional forms, is a key way of um, how they, they, um, they cope with their, with their illness. Do you differentiate spirituality from any particular faith? It can include many sort of faith traditions that you would you know, immediately think of, but of course for many people um, it doesn't necessarily, um, it's not necessarily attached to a particular faith tradition, but for some it is. So there's sort of a whole spectrum of how it might manifest in someone's experience, in someone's life, and in their experience of their illness. So share with us the main points of your research. Most patients, particularly patients facing um, advanced cancers, their spirituality plays a key role in their coping with their illness. It not only plays a key role in their coping, but also in their quality of life. Research also indicates that it also plays a role in issues such as their treatment decision making. So it's clearly an important part of the cancer experience that physicians need to be aware of, and certainly in seeing the whole patient. Could you maybe share a little bit in more intimate terms what that spiritual journey is like? I had a patient who came to see me, a 60-year-old woman with um, metastatic renal cell cancer, it came for, to me for palliative radiation therapy. She felt this strong need to be reconnected to her faith. She felt like her illness really reminded her of the need to do that. We discussed that, I treated her, and I saw her about eight months later, and she was making the transition to hospice care. Even though her disease had progressed, she shared with me this wonderful story of how the revival of her spiritual life for her and for her family was actually something that um, was a very positive and wonderful experience for her. She came to a real place of acceptance and peace of, of the circumstances that she was in and really found something in, in even um, sort of better place for herself in her life through her, through her spiritual journey, which is very uh, sort of a wonderful thing to witness as a physician. What does God really mean in the various ways in which people blend their spiritual life with their faith in God? Not all, but many, many Patients make reference to a sort of a connection to a relationship to God. Um, for some, they wouldn't call it they wouldn't call it God. They would say it would be their connection to nature or their mm -hmm. meaningful relationships with their family members. For many, that connection is the source of much hope, strength, perseverance as they're dealing with their treatments, coming to a place of um, understanding their diagnosis. Another th issue that can arise as well is what you could call spiritual struggle. I mean, some people, they really, they wonder, how could this happen to me? Yes. Um, they begin to question their faith. Uh, they, they wonder why God has allowed this to happen to them. Are they being punished? Things like that, which are, you know, real spiritual struggles that people can experience, which are times that need to be recognized because it's a time to call on chaplains, on patients, spiritual supporters from right. within their communities to really come alongside people and help them with those those deep and important questions and, and struggles. What do patients share with you about their feelings of the soul? There's a, a, quite a few stories, but I remember one patient who um, I got to know who had a, an advanced cancer and an incurable cancer, but years prior she uh, actually during during childbirth, she nearly died, and she had a near-death experience where she felt that she had sort of gone to another place and 
and then returned to her body and felt this sort of calling to return to be a mother to her child. And it was now 20 years later after that experience when she, I was now meeting her and she, you know, I was asking her about how she was dealing with the fact that she has a diagnosis that's um, of cancer that's incurable and she just expressed to me this wonderful sense of where she was going. She said, you know, I know where I'm going because she had been there before mm -hmm. and she felt this incredible sense of comfort and peace. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I've heard it articulated so clearly in, a, in an actual near-death experience from a patient, but other patients also have expressed this sense of the transcendence of their soul and a connection that will, that will endure beyond even the life that's the here and the now. Even if one struggles with whether or not there is an afterlife or at the very least, though, I think that it's so important for physicians in caring for patients to see that person as more than just their body, that they have a part of them, you know, some would call it a soul that is enduring, and, and no matter where their body is in their illness, um, seeing them as that whole person um, and, not just, um, and not just their physical body and seeing that soul. How do we influence physician education based on your research, your knowledge, your mm -hmm. specialty, what do we have to do to help physicians and medical training that this becomes a part of the curriculum? There's definitely being work that's being done in this regard uh, to integrate um, what's called spiritual care uh, training into medical cu curricula. There's a ways to go uh, as far as making it not just a, a small sliver of the medical school experience, but ongoing through um, one's residency, training, et cetera. So, so there's some ground that's been gained, but much, um, much to be done. And I think research is a first step, really illuminating to physicians that this is a real issue for patients. That raises for me, Dr. Baboni, what it means to challenge physicians to question their own belief. Mm -hmm where their own mm. sense of spirituality is because it's a tall order yeah. for, because it requires one mm -hmm. to reckon with themselves. Yeah. So how yeah. do you deal with that? You raise a very important point. I mean, you need to personally reflect on your own views and um, in order to really, I think, uh, acknowledge them and appreciate them within your patients. How do you teach that? Which is, is difficult to teach. I think it's not impossible to teach, however. And I'd say that it's, it's just as important to reflect on your views if you don't consider yourself a spiritual or religious person as it is to reflect on them if you are. <laughs> because I, both of those can create your own biases when you're caring for a patient um, in how you might view them. So for someone that isn't spiritual, for example, they might not it, it might limit you in your ability to see the spiritual nature of your patient and how that's important to them. How did you come to focus on this area? My husband is a, was being trained as a pastor while I was being trained within medicine and he ultimately went on to a PhD in theology. And as we were both going through our training, we realized how much our worlds had in common and yet they never spoke to one another. And I was seeing the needs of my patients and my training not equipping me in any way to be meeting those needs. And of course, watching my husband uh, train in these areas of acknowledging that spiritual aspect of people and yet not that not translating over into the practice of medicine. And so our, our undergoing that training together really caused us both to desire to sort of marry those worlds. Have you changed do you feel from the time you started out in medicine to where you are today because of the focus yeah. of your work? Yes, very much so. Very much so. And again, it's through hearing those, he hearing those stories and seeing and feeling like my eyes are being opened to a larger view of what it means to care for patients. When we talk about being a healer and physicians are healers, you take what healing means to a beautiful extreme. Yes, I, so you are truly a healer. That is my hope. <laughs> I, I'm learning every day um, of what that really means, but that is the hope, to truly be a healer. I thank you. Dr. Tracy Balboni, Assistant Professor in Radiation Oncology and a Specialist in Palliative Care at Harvard Medical School and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.